give us an overview. Yeah, so practice. Yeah, so I um, am a part of a private practice firm called Groff and Associates. Um, we really focus on an integrative healthcare. So that being said, we have um, mental health practitioners, we have LMFTs, LMHCs, um, and LSCW, LSWs. So basically like different forms of like a marriage family therapist, counselors, therapists, all those things. We even have some people that chaplain. So we are a faith-based organization. Um, all of us are um, Christians and use the faith-based model. Um, we also have a nurse practitioner there who works on medications as well for people that might need them. Certainly not something that we push, but if it's needed for someone, you know, for to get to another level of stability. We also even have um, someone who does acupuncture and um, cupping and like aromatherapy. I mean, all the things that's really cool. Um, so we really try and get the whole mind, body, and spirit, because um, those are all so important. Um, and we have people in our practice that specialize in a, a variety of things from, you know, play therapy to couple therapy, addictions, um, eating disorders. Um, we also have dietitians there as well. That is awesome. So Allie, just to, for people that don't understand, you know, people don't understand exactly what a licensed social worker does. Give me an example of your typical day. Um, yeah, so I think, well, first we'll talk about the stereotype. Um, I feel like when someone's like, oh, you're a social worker, they think, oh, you're going to take my kid away. And that's, that's, I don't work in child welfare at all. So I'm a social worker. My background is mental health and addictions was kind of my focus um, in school. So a typical day for me um, is I see people individually face to face um, and work on a variety of things, um, whether it be addiction, eating disorders, um, some OCD, depression, anxiety, whatever that might look like. Um, and I work, I mean, it's kind of hard to say like a baseline because everyone's individual. So I really work to tailor to meet people's needs individually. Um, I also have some groups that I'm doing online right now. I have um, a group. Um, for COVID-19 in particular, kind of the idea, the caption of it is social distancing versus social isolation. So helping people navigate, you know, what that difference is and the anxiety around that as well. And right now that's going to be done virtually, of course, with the COVID-19. No, that is awesome. And um, one, of the, one of the questions that my staff, he sent me right now as we're talking was, it sounds kind of dark. I don't want to. I don't want to be like, yeah. Mark has some mean <laughs> people, but basically, how do you how do you pretend things are going to be okay in such times of uncertainty? And I was like, that's a great question. <laughs> um, well, I think that the key right there is there is no pretending. Like, I think there's a difference between being optimistic, being a realist, and being negative about it. You know, it's so easy, like we were talking about that panic scrolling, right? Being um, freaking out about, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna die, my family's gonna die. I like that catastrophizing, you think of the worst case scenario. The other side of that is thinking of, okay, there. think of how many people have recovered from this amidst the people who have unfortunately lost their, lost their lives. There has been many people that have recovered from this as well. And, you know, we've, we have experienced a pandemic in our nation before. Granted, it was back in the night, like 1918 with the flu. Um, however, we made it through that as a nation. We did make it through it and we're still here. And science has progressed a lot more. So I think helping people realize like, no, this is not the end of the world. You know, we're still, we're gonna be okay. These people have made it okay. Um, and, you know, really kind of building that um, positive, more positive mindset, but realistic too. Like, yes, there is a pandemic and yes, you can be scared. That being said, you can still live your life at the best that you can and be, you know, work on um, focusing on your strengths. That's awesome. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah. I have one more thing I will yeah. say as a positive note. Um, you know, I think with this pandemic on another bright note is, um, one thing that's good about it, it is joining us all together. 
what I mean by that is it's something that we're all experiencing, whether you're black, white, old, young, it doesn't matter. We're all going through this together. So using this as kind of like a joint unity of like, wow, like, you know, I've seen a lot of people like hashtag we're in this together, I think is um, especially like with the school thing, um, those in school and they're not in school anymore. We're all in this together and if we can either use it to push us away or we can use this to join together. And I think this is a perfect opportunity to do that. I love ending things on a positive note. Allie, what is the best way to contact you? You're reachable by phone and by email. My email is Allie at DroppinAssociates.com. And my phone number is 317-474-6448, extension 108.